Hi, I'm Daryl. Welcome to another edition of Blue Collar Sports. I'm sitting here with James. Hello. That's a nice Thursday morning for us. It's about uh, 941 here in the great state of Nebraska. Today, we're going to start off with some baseball. Yeah, very uh, unique situation for good old Bo Bichette, Toronto Blue Jays. How, how would your Yankees be doing right now if they had Bo Bichette? Well, they wouldn't have had a horrendous August and uh, starting to have just as bad September. <laughs> uh, you know, hitting shortstops like Bo, man, well, anybody hitting 280 these days are uh, essential to a team, I guess you could say, since teams like, ah, you bet 220, 200 strikeouts, ah, it's good if you got 25 homers. So, Pitchers but, are amazing nowadays. I, I think it's big turning into a pitcher's game with some of the new rules. <laughs> I know that uh, slugging's been kind of really down in, in the news. Uh, yeah, about being yeah. down. Um, but what Bo Bichette hasn't been done since. Oh, my gosh. Lou Gehrig. Lou Gehrig, 1930. Wow. June 1930. Um, 11 games in September for the Blue Jays. Bo Bichette, Bo Bichette, sorry. Bo Bichette had 24 hits, 21 RBI, 15 runs, 7 home runs, and 6 doubles. Yeah, so just think, that was 11 games. So that's two hits a night, two RBIs at least, every every game. And of those 24 hits, 13 of them are extra base hits. Over half. That is nuts. Yeah. And well, trying to carry your team to come back and overtake the Yankees in the East. Yeah, he, well, and he has them right under him? Yeah, they're about five games out. And there's about roughly 20 games to play. Between the two teams, and uh, they've been handling Tampa Bay the last few days pretty good. I would love to be number two right behind Yankees going into the playoffs because then you know you won't play them until the very end. Right. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. um, or, or you take them over and then you get home, home field advantage. But, I mean, can they do that? It'd be tough. I mean, Yankees uh, last have won four in a row, uh, but Toronto's winning also, so they're staying that pace. But if the Yankees are finding their groove, Torres, <clears throat> sorry, Glaber Torres, is uh, starting to find his stroke. But the real thing right now, if you want to talk about Bichette not doing something in 30, since 1930, Judge is doing something not done since Babe Ruth, 1929, have a 30 run, 30 home run lead on second place. He has 57. Uh, Schorber, I think, has 34, 35. Um, <clears throat> so he could uh, duplicate. Good old uh, Bay Ruth. He's having an amazing season. What, 57 home runs for the Omar. year. Yeah. Oh my and the next closest is 30. Yeah. I mean, wow. Because I thought uh, Otani was doing an amazing job, and he, I don't think he only has in the 20s somewhere. Yep. But <clears throat> no, I'm sorry. He's like 30, 31 also. Is he? Yeah. Okay. But that's amazing to me, as good as a pitcher as he is, that he's yep. amazing at, at. Oh, at the plate. I don't know if we'll ever see another one. I mean, obviously, you never know until they come. But, yeah, to be a dominant pitcher, or at least a really, really above average pitcher, and then now you have him hitting like he hits, yeah, that's second to none. But Judge lives in every offensive stat except average. He's batting 310, and number one is uh, somebody from Cleveland batting 319. So he, he still has a chance to take the old triple crown. So, who do your Yankees play today? Or are they off today? Um, <clears throat> let's see. They finished the series with Boston, so I'm going to guess they're off. And then they'll have a pretty easy, well, I would hope. They got Milwaukee coming up next. Milwaukee coming up next. Yeah, Milwaukee just finished a series with uh, the Cardinals. Um. I, I love this part of the season because everybody gets so intense. It's like any sport. Right. Basketball, they get intense closer to the playoffs because they realize that home field is, is very imperative. When you play a hundred and some games, I mean, it's kind of like, Ugh, I got to play today. Yes. Oh, yeah, I'm a millionaire. Yeah, I'll go play. All right, right. <laughs> I only got a bat 220, you know, seriously. All right, moving on to the NFL. Today is Thursday, so 
Last week, I was confused about where Khalil Mack was. I knew he changed teams, and he <laughs> he went to the Chargers. And I couldn't be any happier for a team and on one one person that they picked up than the Chargers. The Chargers played amazing last year, and they were just a few pieces away from oh. moving forward. Herbert's amazing. Their wide receiving core is amazing. They have amazing tight ends. And now you get Khalil Mack and Bosa. They had some unfortunate injuries. Bosa's another one, great player, but, man, can we get 16, 17 games, 19 games out of you if we can get the playoffs? I don't know if they can or not. You're right. I mean, they're, they're <laughs> both dealing with a couple of injuries right now, um, but no, no major... Mahomes doesn't have to sit out, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. He right. he has a hurt thumb, I think it is. All right. Um, we'll, we'll see how that affects him. They have KC, uh, they being Vegas, has right. the line set at four right now in Kansas City, which I understand. You're in Kansas short, City. Short week. I mean, Kansas City doesn't have to travel. A little extra time to practice. San Diego have to travel. The one thing about the Chargers is they, they don't have Keenan Allen tonight. The Chargers aren't the Cardinals. They're going to put up more of a fight yes. than the Cardinals, I think. I hope. It, you know, granted, Chiefs put up the 44 points. They had five turnovers. Oh, they did. Three of them. Well, I'm sorry. They fumbled five. They turned over three of them. But the Cardinals are so bad that you didn't even notice. Every team had issues because we shortened the preseason. So you had a quicker preseason, fewer practices. I mean, a lot of the teams that are having issues, for instance, Denver, when they lost to Seattle, Denver had two fumbles within the five. Oh, my goodness. So Kansas City had issues. Chargers had issues the first game. Hopefully they got a little bit worked out. And I want this to be an amazing Thursday night game, I, and I think it will. This is a – I'm not touching anything on this game. Chargers have beat them during the regular season. Herbert's first game as a San Diego Charger – I'm sorry, L.A. Charger – was coming in their COVID year. Tyrod Taylor got a mysterious yeah. injury. Have I been saying San Diego the entire I, time, too? We probably have. Well, they'll be um, San Diego for me forever. His first game was against Kansas City and lost to him in overtime. His first rushing touchdown against Kansas City. They've given us great games. Yes. And Herbert can sling it. Oh, Mahomes goodness. can sling it. They both slinging it. All right here, I, you just got to take the home team. I don't know if they're going to win by one, two, or ten. Great. Uh, I will take the Chargers if you're taking the home team. I will gladly take the Chargers if you're taking the home team. <laughs> I, I think Casey gets it done, unfortunately, but I want the Chargers. Oh, I'm rooting Chargers. I want the Don't Chargers to rip off Mahomes' arms and beat them with it and not get flagged for it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Rooting Chargers. Defensively, Chargers gave up 360 yards. Kansas City gave up 308. But Chargers was to a Raiders team who people are picking to win that division. Oh, yeah. The Raiders are great. The Raiders are not the Cardinals. The Cardinals no. are dysfunctional at the moment thanks to everything that yeah. Murray and the front office did to each other. If anyone had a more challenging game getting ready for the other one, Chargers had a very nice warm-up game to come in Kansas City. I, th I think that's a great two field generals, Herbert and Mahomes, and then you, you just hope the defense has a stop or a takeaway, and that's the what changes defense. the game. Yep. But I'll take an overtime game on a Thursday. Whoever has oh, the ball, goodness. whoever has the most points. I mean, and that game's on Amazon Prime tonight. By the way, unfortunately, or if you're Jeff Bezos, fortunately, yeah, I don't right. know. No, uh, I understand. They, it used to be on NFL. It used to be on CBS, and then uh, contracts and money got involved. Mm. Uh, contracts and money. Oh, uh, the why uh, contracts and money. Oh, yeah, that's right. NFL is a business. Just ask Aaron Rodgers why all of his receivers couldn't come back. Oh, that's right, because Aaron wanted paid. Yes. And let's now, start there. Let's start there. And now he's mad, or at least he vented during his press conference about how bad his receiving core did him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steer away just a little bit. Go for it. Who else had to get paid? Dak Prescott had to get paid, so they had to let Amari Cooper go, and now all the talk is, why didn't you get him? Why didn't you keep him? Why didn't you replace him? Um, well, because it's the NFL, and I'm worried about my bottom line also. So, yes, back to Aaron Rodgers. I don't know why they didn't draft one, because you could get a rookie deal in there, but... I, I don't know how to mute. There's no logic in that whatsoever I, for me. I don't follow Green Bay, but I'm willing to bet within the last 10 years, they have not drafted a wide receiver in the first round. When I brought up 
the matchup as far as who's going to win by what Vegas wants and percentage of how it's going to turn out. They don't think Chicago has a chance. And I don't think they're looking at the same team. Granted, the Chicago-San Francisco game during all that rain Ooh, yeah. was weird. Yeah. It, it was almost like the Bears willed it to be a monsoon and their defense played well. And the 49ers are that prima donna team that, you know, I don't want to be too muddy. I really don't want to get wet. And, oh, this sucks. So you could tell. <laughs> I, that, I had no clue. I thought they were it, all football players and then no. they'll, they'll break in too. No. But I just, <clears throat> I, I'm looking at the last two or three seasons for Aaron Rodgers and he's always lost the first three games, one of the first three games, two of the first three games, or combination of the first three games. And he'll come out in press conferences and say, there's no need to panic. Right. We need to have patience. Yeah. I think Chicago comes in and slaps them around at home. A little bit. I don't know what's going to happen. So you picked the last time that San Francisco was going to lose to Chicago. Yes. What's going to happen this game? I had no idea about the monsoon, by the way. That totally (laughs) just kind of helped me out, of course. We're not talking about the prima donna. 49ers are more of a finesse team. Their stuff didn't really work in that monsoon. The Bears defense definitely took advantage. Uh, I agree. I say early first half. It's probably a one-score game. But... Rodgers, not that he owns the Bears, but he knows. And I just don't think Justin Fields is going to score 20 points to beat them. It's first one to 20 wins. And I just see Green Bay getting 24 and Bears maybe getting 13. It'll be an interesting, interesting game to see how the wide receivers that got slided by Aaron Rodgers, how they respond. Mm -hmm. I would like to know what happened in practice. Did Did they play nice? Did they not play nice? Are they waiting to not play nice on Sunday? And at 720. Right. This is the primetime game. So both teams, in my humble opinion, play really well at night. And Chicago's always up for the Packers. I I was just surprised that they have them as right. that big of an underdog. Rogers is tied with Brett Favre currently with the most wins against the Bears. So he can pass Brett Favre tonight if he beats them. Yeah, Brett Favre has been in the news lately. We're not going to get Sunday, into Sunday, not tonight. Yeah, we're not going to get into why Brett Favre is uh, being investigated for fraud. But Oh, goodness. Um, we're going to move on to right. a team that Brett Favre used to play for briefly at the end of his career. The Vikings are going to take on Philadelphia Eagles at home for so, Philadelphia. Right. So since Vegas, so this would be an upset because Vegas has Philly uh, favored, and it looks like 66% are in favor of that. They're uh, pretty high Philly is on the choice of this game. And I don't know if they watch what I watch, but again, Philly's first game of the year is against Detroit and they uh, you know, high scoring affair. Minnesota handled Rogers and his dropping receivers. I, you know, the spreads just two points though. Right. That's so when I saw that, they think 50, 50, but they have the overset at 51. So they think both teams are going to have 25 ish. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or, yeah, who knows? Um, I, I'm taking the Vikes. I, I think the Vikes not only win, I, they probably cover that spread on their own. It's going to be three plus points. I'm thinking seven or 10. No, I'm going to, I'm going to disagree. Philly at home, um, second game and that two point. I mean, I, I agree. It's a toss up. Uh, whoever has the ball last, I think it'll come down to Philly. Um, but that should be a great game. That's also a night game on Sunday on E on AS. Um, blah. I was trying to put ABC and ESPN plus together. <laughs> a side note on this game. <clears throat> Eagles gave up 180 yards rushing to Detroit. Vikings would love to rush for 150 yards on that team. And last week, uh, Dalvin Cook ran for 90 on 20 carries. So yes, they definitely could do it. Um, I. I'm amazed at how far Kirk Cousins has come in the league. Oh, my I, goodness. I, I'm, I'm amazed at what he has done and how he stayed healthy. Um, I counted the kid out years ago. A winning record against Aaron Rodgers, by the way. That's pretty Kirk legit. Cousins. You're telling me Kirk Cousins has a winning record against Aaron Rodgers. Yes. Good. I love it. I love it. And when he shows up to the podium 
with a flannel shirt on. Who does? Kirk Cousins, after that win, he got up there talking about the game, and he's in a flannel shirt. Well, yeah. Button up, just ready to go back out on the farm, sling some hay. Good. I like that. I mean, they need that in Minnesota. That's a good, that's a good, that's a good guy for them in Minnesota. Um, oh, this is my upset of the week right here. Your upset of the week is Tampa Bay, New Orleans. Who are you taking? I'm taking New Orleans. New Orleans upset in Tampa Bay. I, yep. I think you're smoking crack. I don't see yeah. that happening, but if it happens, that'd be interesting. Vegas only has the Bucks winning by two and a half. Same um, as the other one. Yeah. You know. Uh, Noon kickoff in New Orleans. Saints have four wins since Tom Brady has came to the Bucks. Leonard Fournette's questionable. Julio Jones is questionable. Chris Godwin's questionable. Dude, their Rashad injury. Perryman's questionable. Their injury list is ridiculous. There's like 19 people on their injury list. Even Brady's on it because he took a rest day. Anytime you miss any kind of a practice, you have to be put on the injury list. I don't want this as a season uh, to be the season Tom Brady gets hurt. I don't want what Giselle said right. to be some sort of crazy looking into the future and my husband's now broken. I wish he would have listened to me. But I don't know. Saints defensive coordinator has a solid plan when it comes to Tom Brady and the Bucks, and it has worked time after time. They're at home. The big, if it was in Tampa Bay, I definitely would be sticking with the Bucks. But in New Orleans, I'm not a big fan of Jameis Winston. He's not going to shock the world at all. But I do believe Saints put up quite the game and beat Tampa Bay this weekend. I don't see it happening. If it does, it does. Vegas, Vegas is kind of a flip of the coin, and they think Brady will have the ball last and somehow – Make sure he wins, but I don't know. I, I I think it's more than two and a half. I think I think the Bucks win by ten, even though they have all those people that are hurt. He Brady's shown time and time again it doesn't matter what the name is. Mm -hmm. Now, if he is the best receiver in the entire world and he comes in for a year and breaks a touchdown record, Moss did that with Brady. Yeah, the name can make a difference. Right. But I think they have enough talent that Brady can get it done. Now, I think New Orleans has enough talent to get it done. On the defensive side, for sure, they keep it close enough, I think. All right. So I you're, mean, you're saying New Orleans at home is the yeah. upset. That's my upset of the week. I can't say the lock, but that's my pick for the upset this week. It'll be interesting to see what Miami does on the road uh, with a noon kickoff at Baltimore. Um, they're coming off a win, but they're not picked to win this week. No, and I could see uh, Baltimore. It's definitely going to be a way bigger challenge than the Patriots, which is weird to say as a division game. Uh, but the interesting thing when I look at this game is the rushing. Miami did not rush very well at all their first game, and Baltimore, to be a rushing team, was terrible on the ground game. So I think both teams, especially Baltimore, changes that, and uh, they might really wear down Miami come Sunday. There's an interesting question that was posed uh, by the media this week. Are the Chiefs better without Tyreek Hill? And they said yes. Oh, well, yeah. Somehow it opened up more receivers for them. Well, it's like Mahomes when he said, he goes, whenever it was a crunch play or whatever, I looked at Kelsey's matchup, and I looked at Hill, no matter what was the play was called, that's who I was going with. So these other guys are just running these. I mean, they had Woods for a while. He made some nice plays here and there, but overall, I still went to my two guys. Yes, a quarterback is the most dangerous, and I don't want to bring up this game, but the Nebraska game, when that quarterback goes to nine and ten different receivers, the defense don't know who to double. So you're stuck on man-to-man -man all the time. So if so, is Tua going to beat Jackson? I mean, Tua threw for more yards the, last week than, than Lamar, but Lamar's feet could probably win the game. But two of his yeah. feet could win the game. Yeah. I, I am no way thinking Miami in this one. Uh, Baltimore's defense, I think, is by far way more superior than Miami's. Yeah, I think they're going to have a tough time protecting the quarterback. They have uh, a few linemen out. Um, Austin Jackson, the guard. Teron Armstead, their offensive tackle. I think that's really going to hurt them. I think uh, it's going to come down to a sack fumble. Oh, you think it's going to be a close one? 
Three and a half is what uh, Vegas has it. Uh, over set at 44 and a half because they're still going to put up some points. Right. But, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll take Baltimore in the, and I'll take uh, the over on that 44. Overs? Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. I'll, I'll take unders on that one. I don't, I don't think it's, uh, I think it's going to be a little bit of a sloppy mess. Back, back to what you said, though. That preseason, I think there's a lot of quarterbacks. I won't even list all the ones that didn't even throw a ball in the preseason, and they all look like doo doo on Sunday. <laughs> it gets back to they didn't have enough practice. There's some uh, quarterbacks that didn't even go to um, workouts, right? And leading into sloppy, San Francisco had a had a fun oh sloppy mess gosh. game, and Seattle was fortunate that the Broncos were sloppy. Yeah. You know, nothing. I, I want to give Gino all the credit because I said it last week that this game would have be a laugh or Denver should have won by 10 plus. They might have won by 10 if they didn't fumble those both those touchdowns away. But Gino played way better than I thought. Only five incompletions. Didn't have 200 yards. Only 195. Managed the game well. I'm going to uh, round up. That's 200 yards. And he was so poised. Yes. He was so ready for that. Right. But sorry, Seattle fans. Temper the expectations. You are not getting that every week. I'm sorry. You might get that three more times this whole year. Uh, this 49ers game will be the wake-up game. Uh, Niners win by 10. I think this is a game Trey Lance gets um, benched. Oh. I don't think he's that good. You, you heard me say it last week. Is he already looking over his shoulder because Garoppolo signed that one year? And that first game against the Bears, whether or not, it didn't look good, and Fields was able to get it done. He could prove me wrong. At home, Fields confident. Uh, they're not uh, playing under monsoon conditions, but I just I I think Seahawks come in and uh, shock San Francisco at home. Really? Yeah, I really do. This is your upset because they're favored by like ten, right? Nine or eight or nine, eight and a half. Yeah, round up to nine. Forty um, Nineers are favored at home. Uh, I just. I don't know. I don't have confidence in Trey Lance. I don't. He He's a great quarterback. I just, after what I saw against Chicago, I don't think he has it yet. He could. He could. And, and, and San Francisco could choose to have some growing pains, stick with them, be okay with a couple losses at the beginning of the season and hope they turn it around. But I think that's the game where they decide, well, uh, well, actually, I mean, would Garoppolo be any better? Would he come back in and be better? Are you talking about no preseason, no practices? I know. And that's I hope just he's it. hitting no. it hard right now. Well, and he was hurt. I mean, mm-hmm. is he ready? I don't know. Yeah. I, I see Trey Lance having quite the bounce back at home. I mean, I think a big thing is at home, a division foe, Trey Lance at home against Seattle, a very familiar foe to him. I, I think it's a big bounce back game for him. I'm not saying he's going 350 or what, anything like that, but I do think he leads them to a win and actually covers a spread and wins by 10. If he does, that'll give him a lot of confidence going into next week. Yes. Um, that'd be huge. I don't see it happening. Um, the Seahawks defense really frustrated Wilson, but they also knew no what to do. Preseason. But they, but hey, their coach, their coach, the Seahawks coach, Knew exactly what to do to frustrate him. They they made sure to push him out of the pocket to have Russell Wilson run to his left, and no one throws great on their left against their body across the field. Right. And Listen they the did homes. that a lot. Yeah, but come on. Yeah. 50, 50, that's 50-50 even for no, Mahomes. No, 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 you're right, you're right. I think Seahawks' defense, they're coming off a high. They beat their former Super Bowl quarterback. And um, they're either going to come into the hangover after partying too hard yes. in Seattle. No. Yes. No. Yeah, I don't have a crystal ball either. But um, we're gonna we're gonna shift gears. We're gonna start thinking about college football. And um, first game I want to talk about is a big Big Ten matchup: Michigan State, Sparty on the road. Pac-12. Yep. Pac-12, Washington. The Huskies going 2 0 to start. And Michigan State's ranked 11. They have the chance to be beaten 
by a Washington Huskies team that is just rolling right now. Um, they, the Huskies have put up more points. They have oh, passing and rushing. They, I don't know. I, granted, they haven't played that good a team. I mean, yeah, I uh, mean Kent, Kent and uh, Providence State, right? But I mean, still, come on, let's put a little perspective here. Fifty-two You're, points and forty-five points. Right, right. Now on Michigan, uh, Michigan put up fifty-two points against Akron, uh, Western Michigan. They beat thirty-five thirteen. Um, now. What are they going to do on the road? So to me, this comes down to the Big Ten style of play. Michigan State's going to run the ball. Washington's giving up 115, 120 a game. And then you have a Michigan State team that likes to run the ball at 230 a game. Very balanced, by the way. They pass for 220-ish, right? So 230. I do believe Michigan State comes runs the ball. Uh I see that Washington is favored over number 11, Michigan State. Yeah, they are. And I don't know what we're going off of. Neither team has really played either person, and we're going to go who scored the most points. Well, they only have the spread set at three and a half. Right. Um, but they do have the over set at 56, which I think is low. Honestly, I don't know who's going to win this game because I think it's evenly matched. Um, I, think, I think Michigan State might throw more picks. Um, just going off the stats, looking at what, what their quarterbacks have done so far this year. I would take the overs, and I wouldn't touch Michigan State or Washington because I think whoever has the ball last. Good win. Yeah. But if you force me to pick, home team, Washington. Spartans. All right. You're taking Sparties to stay with the Big Big Ten, and I'm going to go with the Huskies. Um, staying on this side of the country, Oregon is at 25 at home against BYU. That's a 2.30 game. It should be fun. Oregon's 1-1. One and one, BYU is 2-0. and oh, And, again, uh, the spread isn't very big. It's 3.5. They're thinking whoever has the ball last probably. Um, 58's the overs and unders. Both have been battle-tested. Oregon uh, lost uh, Laffer to Georgia. And BYU took Baylor to overtime and beat them, double overtime. And a won on a very low-scoring game, which surprised me. So I'm liking BYU mainly on the defensive side of the ball. Their defense has really played extremely well this year. I feel both of their defenses are a little porous. I think they're going to score a lot of points on each other, and this could come down to another overtime game. And like you said, Baylor, 26-20, they didn't score a whole lot of points there. Baylor's number nine, but they put up 50 points on Southern Florida, and Southern Florida put up 21 points. Um yeah, I. Yeah, a lot of offense, not the best defense. Um, I'm going to stick with the home team again. Oregon uh, coming out with a win, and uh, definitely the overs. They they are so mad that they got beat up by Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or I'm completely wrong, and BYU comes in and smashes them right in the mouth. Oh, that'd be so funny. Yeah, I mean, I it's it's funny how different our picks are today. But yeah, I'm still sticking with BYU. I think you're. In. I think you're right. I just I want Oregon to come back, but I uh, I honestly think you're right. I'm picking with my heart today, and that's something I, I tell that. people never uh, to can't do. do that. No. I, you can't do that. You're gonna, you're going to be the worst gambler ever. Right. That's why I don't gamble. Vegas loves you guys. If I were actually s s sitting money on the counter in front of whoever's taking my money, I, I would take BYU in the overs all day long. Oh, yeah. But yeah. right now, I just want Oregon to come back and win at home. Can they do that? I don't know if they can or not. But it should be a good game. I think yeah. it should be – I think that should be a back-and-forth game, and it definitely has the possibility of going overtime and just being a great finish. Yeah. This next game – Miami A and M, <laughs> holy cow! I think it should be great. Even your even your phone loved it. It, it said your phone was like, "Yeah, I love this game." <laughs> Miami's favored on the road. I don't get a it. A and M just lost to Appalachian State, right? Is that 
I'm glad you brought that up. The Sun Belt. Yeah, well, yeah, you're right. Uh, they are playing well, but still A&M was. Appalachian the, State is one of the top teams in their category of football. Yes. I say category of football because there's divisions. And they have repeatedly been in their playoffs in the top of yes. their game for the last 10 years. And when people get beat by them, they're a little put off. But they play some of the most precise, disciplined football when they come in and play Division One teams because they realize that's the only way that they can win. You have an SEC powerhouse predicted to push in that division this year and was held to 14 points. All right. Bring Appalachian State along with them. Held to 14 points. I don't think it's a must win. I don't think they're going to be firing uh, A&M's coach if they lose to Miami. Miami's obviously a very good team this year. Uh, but bounce backs at home, I do. Uh, I, I see A&M winning this at home as a bounce back game. I disagree with you. I think Miami's going to come in and just slaughter them. Just, oh, you're thinking 10 plus, huh? I don't see how, I don't see how they slow down. They put up 70 points against Boston College. I mean, I know Texas A&M wants to come in at home and have a good showing, but boy, they laid an egg last week, and Miami's tough. Yeah, but they they haven't played. I mean, even Boston College, they really haven't played anyone. Have they been battle tested for real to jump up to thirteenth overall? Yeah, mm. I I agree with you. They, they, no, they haven't. Um, and, and it's crazy. I brought this up, um, and. I just, an 8 o'clock game, there's, I don't know. Miami comes in and just whoops them. Nice. I would love it. I mean, I'd like to see SEC Texas schools Texas A&M fall. is favored by six. I At home, yeah. I feel Miami's going to win on a field goal. I think it'll be interesting and close. I just, I just don't think Texas A&M has it in them. Eh. Miami and the overs on the 8 p.m. Saturday game. <laughs> and you are all over Texas A&M. Yeah, I think it's an easy bounce back that Appalachian State can be called the trap game before the Miami game. However way you look at it, uh, A&M at home, uh, 12th man, I believe uh, A&M takes care of business. I almost want to say wire to wire. I don't think Miami leads the game at all unless they have the ball first and kicks a field goal goes up 3 nothing, then obviously I'm out. But I do see A&M uh, taking control early and keeping it. They have the talent wire to wire. They could definitely do it. Yep. You could prove me wrong. I'm sticking with my Miami. I just – they had a good start to the season. Man, next week's going to be interesting after all these games happen and we see where we're at. It, it could be. Or, or one of us is exactly right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. That's but it, it's, love it. it's fun. It's, it's our, love it. Yeah. yeah. I love like it. Like you said, it's your favorite time of the year, football season. North Carolina State at home, taking on a Texas Tech Red Raider team. Both of them are undefeated. Who comes out with a loss? Um, I, again, I go with who's actually been tested. Texas Tech played a really tough Houston team uh, in overtime. I don't see NC State much of a roadblock. I mean, they are at home. They are a very good team, but man, Red Raiders might be surprising in the Big 12 this year. Yeah, uh, Houston, two overtime win against Houston. Texas Tech last week beat them 33-30 and put up 63 points on Murray to start off their season. So they can definitely put up the points. Um, right. Last week, North Carolina played, uh, yeah, that team that they put up 55 points on. <laughs> Texas Tech averaging over 500 yards in offense. Charleston Southern Buccaneers. Right. A whole nother Southern. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm just taking Tech as, like I said, they were just battle tested last week, coming in strong, riding a high. Uh, NC State hasn't showed me anything this year from the little bit that I've watched them that says they're going to slow this team down. 
All right. You are going against what Vegas has picked. Um, Vegas has NC State winning by 10. Overs and unders are set at 54. Ooh, that's right in the middle. I'd have to leave the over-unders alone. Honestly, I'm going to go unders on this, and I'm going to say NC State. Um, Because I think both of them have good defenses. Yes. But one's been tested, so you know it's a good defense. NC State, I mean, giving up points, 21-20 to East Carolina? Really? I know first game of the season and all, but... This is how good East and... East Carolina is. They're better than Nebraska because they haven't, Nebraska hasn't been to a bowl. At least East Carolina was invited to a bowl. Um, and earlier, East Carolina was the one who almost beat NC State on a field goal, and they just kind of flubbed it. East Carolina's good. So, in so, summary, I'm right, you're wrong. Ha ha. In their games, if you look at just last year as East Carolina carrying over to this year, they don't have a marquee win unless you count Southern Florida, 29-14. I mean, they beat Temple 45-3. to And Memphis was an overtime 30-29. to Memphis was good. So Memphis was rated. I'm with you. They finished 7-5 and five coming into this year. For college, that's good. Right, but not a team that should be challenging an NC State team. I disagree. I disagree. I think Eastern Carolina could come over to uh, this division and um, play really well and still finish 7-5, and five. and I think that's a good record. Why do I think that's a good record? Because I'm in Nebraska, and we haven't had a winning record over 500 since Scott Frost has been in town. Bye, Scott Frost. <sighs> See you. Mickey Joseph, I wish you the best of luck. This is a tough town to do business in. Um, in, in, in the Midwest, this is tough. Bo Schembechler tried to come in and do the same thing in, in Oklahoma and had 10 times the experience that Scott Frost does. Scott Frost had experience coaching, coached under great people, went down to Florida. Got his first gig down there. That was his first gig. Very, 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 very weak schedule compared to Big Ten. And, you know, notching the belt, beat Auburn. And they can say Auburn didn't want to be there because they thought they should be in the playoffs and didn't go all out and overlooked them, blah, 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 blah. But if you've done they any research... The yeah, they did. They won. they won the game. That's all that matters. But if you've done any research on what Scott Frost does, it's never about defense and stopping somebody. No. And you can't do that. And we've seen that this week. Can't do that. Nope. So in summary, who are you picking again? Texas Tech or NC State? Because we went all over the place on that one. Oh, it's it's Tech. Yeah. yeah I think you're yeah, wrong. Tech. NC State at home. Okay, this is the part of the show where I call, hey, we beat Nebraska last week. What are we doing this week? Georgia Southern is 2-0. They're on the road. Underdogs to UAB by 11.5 points. On the road, underdogs to UAB. 11.5 points. Well, how many points were they scheduled to lose to the Nebraska Cornsuckers? 20. How many did they beat us by? Three? Three. Yeah. Kyle Van Trees played at Buffalo. He is a transfer, thanks to the transfer portal that happens. So far this season, he has put up 776 yards. He is 66 on 102, five touchdowns and three interceptions. And the big thing on that, different, 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 different receivers. No one's finishing that game with 10, 12 catches. He throws to anyone open, which makes it so hard on any defense. Georgia Southern put up 59 points on their first game and 42 po- or 45 points against their second opponent, which was Nebraska. I, I mean, I'm just bringing up a team that th- this, is just, this is just fun to watch what this kid does. Oh, I agree. I agree. And I think too many people are overlooking them, especially Vegas. Obviously, I don't have their magic motion that they – potion that they have down there, but 11 points for a team that's averaging – Almost 50 a game, 570 yards of offense. Yeah, this is my Vegas has it wrong from the get-go because I yeah. think Georgia Southern comes in and wipes UAB off the map. Oh, goodness. I mean, UAB, the most they've scored, they scored 59 against AAMU. I, I mean, think Georgia right. Southern wins by 10, and the yes. and I think Georgia Southern puts up 40 themselves. Easily, Georgia Southern scores 45 this game. Yeah, Georgia Southern and the overs on this one is what I'm thinking, and I hope Kyle Van Trees has uh, – Oh, has huge. a good season. I hope he stays healthy, and he could he could be a good 
NFL quarterback. I mean, he's no Kirk Cousins. <laughs> you laugh. So that's why I said that, because you never know what's going to happen. 100%. 100%. You never know. You never know. Well, there was a Michigan kid years ago that never no. played, and now he's going to be a Hall of Fame quarterback. Right. You want to know his name? What even get, didn't even want, no one even wanted him. Tom Brady. He was like, oh. Last pick. Patriots like, oh, well, we need a pick. Oh, well, get that lanky kid over there. Yeah, get that skinny kid out of Michigan. Yeah. He, didn't, he didn't do anything. Maybe he'll bring us water. Right. He didn't even start at Michigan. Kyle Van Trees had our number. He, he's a 6'2 senior. He is out of Ohio. Um, yeah, his quarterback rating isn't great, but he can sling it. And, yeah. uh, and, he's, and he's accurate. Right. And the rating's down only because he doesn't have a lot of touchdown throws. Uh, they have a gr- really, really well running game. Obviously, you saw that against Nebraska. So a lot of those are rushing touchdowns. He only has the five with all those yards. Once those touchdowns will start coming up, his rating's going to go way higher. Well, his overall rating for the season is 138 right now, his quarterback mm-hmm. rating. Last year, over the whole season, he finished at a 126.6. Again, lead. only eight touchdowns. He gets them down there, and then they run it in. So... And he completed 61%. Right. And you know it's rushing time. He's putting up 50 a game, and he only has, you know, the five touchdowns. So, obviously, they're running the ball that's getting it in the end zone. Yeah. I I think he's a good quarterback. It'll be interesting to see what he does. And uh, feather in your cap, you beat Nebraska at home. Something a lot of college teams are doing nowadays. Oh, he's a senior. I wonder if he gets his COVID year and he transfers to a Power 5 school and becomes a top 10 pick. I hope not. I hope he gets uh, drafted and gets paid. Nebraska is going to have Oklahoma come to town and beat the crap out of them. Uh, Oklahoma is uh, ranked 6. Nebraska is 1-2, and two, coming off a humiliating loss to Georgia Southern. Vegas doesn't give us a chance. I don't blame them. What does Mickey Joseph have up his sleeve to prove me wrong? Because Vegas has him favored... 11 points and 66 overs and unders. And does Nebraska score any of those? Do you think that's low? 11 points. Neutral, because right now home team gets three. So it would no, technically be a two touchdown game. So they're saying Oklahoma 14. I think that's awfully low for a team that just lost their coach, lost to Georgia, well, gave up 48 points to a Georgia, Georgia Southern team who we just discussed. And you have an OU team coming in here, sixth in the country. With a team that's probably on a low, and they're only favored by 11? I'm glad you brought that up. Let's do a little role playing. Okay. You're Cheen Ander, or however you say his name, the defensive coach. I'm Mickey Joseph. All right, defensive coach, if um, you don't hold Oklahoma to under 40 points, you're fired. Okay. Um, I haven't been able to stop anybody all year including three months to get ready for Northwestern. So oh, do, you, do you want to clean out your closet right I, now then? Yeah, I'm going to get my resumes ready. And uh, yeah, I already have my box packed because I thought when Frost left, I was leaving. I'm not sure why I'm still here. Okay. I'm, I'm agreeing with you then. The overs and unders are really low. Yes. They should be 83. Yeah, I mean, you could totally see a, a 50 to 20 game. <laughs> you think we're going to put 20 points up? Oh, well, yeah, because I mean, if you look at offensively, when they're on the field to get any kind of rhythm, Thompson nails it. I mean, he throws really good balls. The receiving core is catching them. We move the chains. I mean, but we obviously our running game is We haven't seen Oklahoma's great. defense. Well, again, they haven't played anyone. Texas, El Paso, and Kent. So they haven't really been battle-tested either. Not that I'm going to say they're going to be sleeping on Nebraska, but they haven't had a whole lot of uh, weapons to have to stop with their defense. So, yeah, I think... I think Nebraska gets 20. Yeah, we might. We have a very talented offense. We could. Oklahoma's very talented, obviously, at rank sixth. Now, on a side note. We could come in possessed, and the kids decide to start playing because Scott Frost is gone, and we could keep it within 14, two scores. But that still has Vegas. But that still has Vegas. Right. No, one score. This will be a one-score game just because that's the way it falls for Nebraska and their fans. But on that side note, when you're talking about the Scott Frost. But we, we played, the, a, and you could be 100% correct, because we played Oklahoma really tough last year. On the year. road, right. On the road, but we're at home. We yep. don't play very good at home. Why? One scores. One score. Why don't we play good at home? Oh, 
I don't know. It's not like we don't sell out or loud or, you know, one of the better home fields. Yeah, it's weird. Why won't we? we so have you been seeing some of the rumors coming out about Scott Frost? Don't care. He doesn't okay. coach here anymore. Hold on. Hold on. If those rumors are even halfway true. What are the rumors? What are they? Uh, late to meetings, drunk at meetings, hungover. Isn't that the same not, thing that they said about, right, hold on, hold on. That the, same thing they said yes. about the athletic director? If they're Lewis? halfway true where he's not making these or canceling them because he can't make it for whatever reasons, and the team saw that, and now Mickey comes in, and it's a whole other feel, and these guys wake up and play like, okay, hey, now we have somebody that cares. We might see a team that we have not seen since Scott got here because of those things hidden behind the thing. And if all those were true, then I have no idea why... Trev didn't let him go last year. But if Scott is having sorry. all those issues, if he is showing up late, if he does have booze on his breath, if he is drunk, Scott, I hope you figure out what's going on in your life and you figure it out and get back on track. Back to football. Right. Scott isn't here. I don't care. And I'm and I'm being really ruthless about it right. because no, no. I was at school when Scott was at school. I don't care what this kid does. Scott left a girl almost get her face face bashed in by Lawrence Phillips. Right. I think the kid hid in the closet or under the bed. He was, yeah, definitely hid in the closet. My, so, so my point gonna, isn't so about we're him. On. We're going to move it on. Is I don't care Mickey about Joseph. Scott Frost. I don't care about it's Scott about Frost. It's about Mickey Joseph. Okay, great. Talk about Mickey Joseph, not Scott yes. Frost. Yes, Mickey Joseph, if we're saying is true, it can come in and turn this team around. Right now, the defense is terrible. We got that. But if there was a disconnect between the two because of meetings that weren't made or done or had, and Mickey Joseph is there, the minor changes he made, might be very, very noticeable this very next game. And who better to do it against than OU? And that's why they play the game. Mm -hmm. You never know what happens. Scott, I hope you're not listening. Or if you are, I hope you get it figured out. If there's nothing going on or there's nothing wrong and they're just rumors, well, that's part of the game, buddy. Part of the game. So, Oklahoma, Nebraska. That. 11 o'clock early start. Yeah, uh, that's probably going to mean a lot, of, a lot of the downtown areas are going to be mm. either going to be happy or sad after the end of right. the game. You never know. Sad. All right, speaking of sad, this last week, uh, or this beginning of this week, Stanford came into town and showed us how to play volleyball on our home court in four sets. I, I think the first set nailed it. Uh, Nebraska's up 21-18, had it 23-21, let it slip away, lost 27-25. And granted, they won the third set, but pretty much Stanford stole momentum, won the first two sets, and it was an uphill battle after that. Yeah, i like to see that Maggie Mendelson got uh, a little more playing time. Um, Lindsey Krause had nine kills. Whitney Lonstein had 11 kills, three blocks. Maddie Kubik, 13 kills, zero blocks. Um, I mean, Stanford, I can't say owns us, but they have beaten us five straight now, uh, five straight matches. So it's one of those where we just got to get them figured out. That's early in the season. I'm glad we had a good team like Stanford come to town. They're really good. Yes. Well, the next one's not going to be much easier. Kentucky comes in. Uh, I'm sorry, at Kentucky. Yeah, they're going to play on the road at Kentucky. So it'll be another battle tested. Kentucky's got a really decent volleyball team. Um, Kentucky's great, and we we have some great, talented people on our team. I think Coach Cook is going to take this Stanford moment and teach, um, and hopefully this will influence the younger players and show them what needs to be done to win. You can't take a playoff. Sloppy serving from top to bottom. I don't care if you're a senior or a freshman, um, but they're serving – is so tough. They they try to hit a specific spot on the floor and yet hit it as hard as they can. Some some have a little bit softer touch, but some of them, the ones that are still hitting the net or out of bounds, are trying to hit it so hard. So hopefully, closer to the end of the season, our serving gets better. Um, and this is still that time of year where Cook is messing with the lineup. He's trying different things. He's rolling stuff out, seeing what works. Uh, like I said, early in the season, good game, out of conference games, doesn't hurt too much. Uh, big thing right now, obviously, is just win the Big Ten. So, good battle test for him. I loved it. 
Even if we don't win the Big Ten, because we didn't win the Big Ten last year, did we? No. Um, Wisconsin. Wisconsin was so good. Mm-hmm. But, Our I mean, volleyball they put team is so good. Go 22 ahead. points a game on that loss to Stanford. I mean, every match they're putting up 22. Yeah, I think so the they, least we put up was, what, uh, 22. I, and the one we won was we held them to 19. Right. Um, we, we could have done it. It's just yes, certain yeah. just little mistakes. Yep. We're there. We're right. there. I said, very young team, very whole, big time growing pains. Yeah. It's good to see Whitney Lonstein um, getting better at placing it in the back far corners. Um, she's seeing the, see, she, she is seeing the floor better. I think Lindsay Krause is seeing the floor better. Um, and Maggie Mendelson mm. led the team with blocks. So I like to see our, our young team getting better. And I think losing to Stanford actually makes them better in the long run. Some coachable moments. So I'm Daryl. This has been Blue Collar Sports. James, have a good one. Uh, We'll talk to you next Thursday.